Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about what 40 some years as being a collision tech has taught me. One thing for sure is being organized, having the correct tools, having them at your arm's reach is probably the most critical thing you can do today in order to stay afloat and stay profitable in a collision business on commission. I know some people out there are probably on salary. It really wouldn't matter to them unless they want to be more efficient for their boss. But for mine, being on commission since 1980, I've done it wrong for many, many years. That's why I'm doing these videos today to try to help out maybe some other people in the trade that aren't necessarily looking into this avenue. It's, it's very critical. It actually is. It's probably the most critical piece of being productive on a daily basis and making a, a decent uh, wage for your efforts. So stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, we're gonna do something a little bit different. You know, I've mentioned in the past that I've been in a collision business for 47 years. I had a lot of aches and pains through the years. But one thing that I've learned over the years is that if you can become very organized, you can make a lot of money. A lot of us for years just thought, get a big toolbox, you pile the tools in it, you know, you open the drawer up, you dig through the drawer looking for your, you know, 13 millimeter. Really didn't matter too much that your tools were organized. I'm here to tell you after years and painfully losing tools because I never knew if I lost something because it was never put away correctly, for one. And for two, I spent endless hours looking for things, didn't have a place, weren't put back on a daily basis, and I had to go on a seek and find mission just to do a job. Now, tightened up with the insurance companies, our labor rates have come down. We have to work so much harder and faster and more efficient to, to make a paycheck on commission in today's day and age. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over the box again and talk about some of the stuff that I prefer to use. It's just my opinion of these tools. So let me swing the camera around here a little bit. I don't know if you remember this toolbox or cart. It's not really a toolbox. This is a cart with a power drawer. Bought back in Black Friday, right around the end of November, 1st of December. I've had a chance to work with it for whatever, two, three months now and uh, refine it. And it's not done yet, but it's come a long ways. I'm gonna dive into the top of it a little bit here. This is where all the sockets are. What I ended up doing was I lined up my quarter inch here first. So I took shallow magnetics, mid-depth, and deep wall magnetics. These are, I don't know, a five through a 15. This might be the same, five through 15, probably this one too. And that's generally what you'll use working on a car today in the collision trade. Well, up front here, I've got some extensions. I've got quite a few here, different lengths. I don't use the long ones that often, but every once in a while they need to be used. Ratchets, quarter inch, manual, three eighths manual. I don't have a half inch manual. I don't see much need in it. Okay, here I've lined up my Torx, some three eighths extensions, shorter extensions that can be lined up on the rails. This again is that Cornwall grid system. These are my swivels. Looks like a 10 through a 15 again. I've got some extras over here, which are carry-on of this 3 8 drive, taking me up to, I believe, a 24. So again, same thing. Shallows, mid-depth, deep walls. These are Milwaukee's. I love them. And the reason being, as you can see, no question what you're grabbing. I do have to go go back and label these rails. I don't know if they'll hold up or if you'll even be able to see them with the socket covering most of it. You might not be able to. They're supposed to sit right here on the edges, the sizes, little stick on stickers. Directly behind that, I got my inverted Torx, some more extensions, 3 8 shorts, like a two and a four, or those are half. I'm sorry, those are half inch. Those were 3 8 Then I come down the line and I've got my half inch drive and I'm missing one as you can see. But now I know I'm missing that. If I didn't have these on a rail and I just threw them in a drawer, I would have no idea. Months could go by till I needed that socket again, and I'd go, oh my God, where's my socket? And I'd be looking for it knowing that it's already lost and gone, left in a car, who knows? And then we go into the deep wells. You'll notice I run all six points. There's some 12 points back here, and these were for axle nuts. And there were some different axle nuts that they came out with that you had to have a 12 point on. So I purchased those. These go all the way up to, I don't know, 36 millimeter. Down here, I've got a couple of American ones that work out sometimes on hitches and some standard bolts or on a frame rack, and they're usually a 15, 16 and a one and one eighth. Here I have some Cornwall extensions. These are kind of unique. They look like they're just an extension, but you can pop them apart and use them as a swivel as well. And then if you're done with them, you can just put them back as an extension and use them that way. I have all three sizes there. Inverted torques here, the bigger ones. I have the smaller ones. I have to add some more rails here. These rails here are made by Blue Point. Very, very good because they're magnetic. I can put them wherever I want. I've utilized this was dead space back here. Wasn't doing anything for me. I decided to take these. I had one of them already, and that's this one here. And I added two more. Over here, I've got my quarter inch drive 
Torx that I use for a lot of door panels. Uh, Phillips to get into the wheel walls, use stubby Phillips. And these are magnetics that can go hex drive, very inexpensive. They come in handy if you want to use your, your drill instead of your, um, instead of using a, a ratchet. I use both. I'm more apt to use a ratchet than I am the hex driver. Don't ask me why, but it's just the habit I get into. These here are pretty unique. This is a tool. It's an off-brand. And what you can do with this, you can lock it at any position. And you can get into different tight spots with it, wheel walls and that. I have two of those. I have the long one and I have the short one over here. Uh, magnets here. Up here I have all my flat picks come in real handy for trim panels working on cars getting the clips out we'll set here don't use these very often but every once in a while i took an extra piece of grid board i cut it down i put two-way tape on it and i stuck it in here and it works perfectly i've got my safety glasses clipped in up here i don't use the power strip because i'm rolling this thing around to the job my big thing is i want my tools within a foot or two of where i'm working at all times i don't want to walk back and forth to a toolbox all day long i did it for years i wore out many a pairs of boots wore myself out don't make no money walking back and forth on the toolbox keep that in mind guarantee you you don't get paid for that aspect of any of this business whether you're a mechanic or a collision tech it doesn't matter you're not getting paid for it guaranteed so over here i've got some my air chisels and some straight chisels files i don't use the files that often contemplating whether or not they're even going to stay in this cart what i really want in this cart is everything that i possibly would need on a daily basis i don't want to walk back to my my bench in my other drawers to find what I've got stored in there. Here I've got some miscellaneous stuff. This is a unit bit with an extension on it. Uh, this is a spot weld cutter. It goes in a drill and this part you can hang on to while you're pushing on it. The drill, I use unit bits. I've got transmission line tool to release the clips on the trans lines. If we move over to here, we've got just different plastic tools for prying up moldings and stuff and keeping uh, from damaging the metal or the paint on the car. These are magnetic trays too by Blue Point. This one I think I picked up at Harbor Freight. I've got this. This is when the hood shocks are bad. I can put this on the hood shock and tighten it and keep the hood from falling on my head. I've got a battery terminal remover, which works great for windshield wipers as well when they're froze on. Over here, I got a battery battery clean, terminal cleaner. Down below you'll see I've got just, um, I think my leftover plane tips I don't use that often. These two tools I use quite a bit. And then there's a Torx over here on the end. Again, not a whole lot over there. I keep most of the major stuff, the long pry bars, and that over on this side just because that's the stuff i use more often you can see from here from hanging down all my phillips are over back over here i've got a couple of plain tips in there this is a set of extendedly long torques they're starting to make them again but for years they didn't make them maco made these you have to have these for a mercedes to get inside the door and take the handles off because the screw is so far in, inside the uh, door to get to it i got a couple of pry bars over here i've got my earmuffs here now around the back, this is wasted space again. I didn't want nothing sticking out too far, but I went with three magnetic can holders. And back here, I keep all the everyday stuff that I use. Brake cleaner, rubber care. This stuff's the most amazing thing on rubber to get anything to go back on. Radiator hoses, seals, I don't care what it is. You spray that on there and they slide right on. Cavity wax for after we've done welding, we spray up inside to treat the welds. I got some penetrating oil, some white grease, some general trim adhesive for gluing on. Vapor barriers inside of doors this is a um, eto primer or when you're gluing on plastic you have to prime it this is just some anti-seize which is another thing that i use quite a bit of if i take something apart and it's fighting me coming off i'm get, it's getting anti-seize going back together make my life a lot easier in the next guy as well this is a uh, cornwall sells these this is a crazy light it's magnetic uh, i stick it on the back of my box which is crack scratching it but see how you can swing it out and pivot it and it's really bright it's also got a Bluetooth adapter in it. These are speakers. So you can play your music at your toolbox from your phone on your bench or wherever you put it in your jacket, your lunch bucket. So anyway, that covers the back of it. It covered the front of it. Let's dive into the drawers a little bit. Top drawer, I still don't have my foam carved out. This, these are all going to get inlaid in here. The reason I haven't done it yet is I'm still deciding what of these tools are going to stay in this drawer and what I might end up adding. And obviously once you cut the foam, you're done. You're committed to that. So I've held off on doing that just yet. This drawer is pretty much done, but I just thought about it on the way here today to film this, that I got these um, American-made wrenches in here. I don't use them in my cars at all. If anything, they might get used to take 
fittings apart, something unrelated to cars usually, maybe an oddball hitch where they used American bolts on it. So I really need, these are ratchets on one end and box on the other end. I might just take these home and switch out for a set I've got at home that actually pivot on the ends, they flex. And that's kind of key right now. I'm finding that those would come in handy more here than they would at home. So I'm probably gonna swap something out in here. But what's nice about this is you can just take these screws out at the bottom of these clips. I don't have that one in because it's supposed to be a blue clip and I ran out of them. And you can move this stuff around. I am missing another wrench. I know I am. I was when I was going through. Oh, right here. The 10, but I think I have that one. I think it got in my pocket and went home with me one night when it shouldn't have. Okay, this is the plier drawer. This is pretty set. I went back and I changed out some of these. I'm not done. I got this one to do and this one to do. And I've got one more slot in here, or maybe I can sneak some of these guys in here and tighten that up a little bit. But for the most part, all this works very well. Take them out, put them in. Take them out, put them in. End of the day, I can look in here and go, okay, I didn't leave any pliers in a car. I'm good to go. So I run, this is the pop off the grommets on the exhaust systems, the donuts. It's an amazing tool. These are flat jaw knips, which I wish I had the other two sets and I eventually will invest in a larger and small. I think there's four sizes now. These are amazing for straightening metal and lips because the jaws are smooth, are just a lifesaver. A lot of times you go in through a hole and you bend the hole and you got to go back and straighten it. These are the guys that'll get that done. Hose clamp pliers, they lock in and uh, take off spring-loaded hose clamps. These are pretty decent. I like these, but I'm really sold on these. These are the most amazing. Cornwall has them, Snap-on has them. I'm trying to think of the manufacturer of these. They make them in an offset like this one and a straight. And these are amazing for getting that hose clamps. So I put them in here like so, and I know they're there at the end of the day. Needle nose, vice grips, uh, regular vice grips, three sizes. I got a small set of knips, regular channel locks. These are pretty killer. If you're in a tight spot and you really need to get around something large, then we'll them get the job done. A couple of pairs of cobalts. Down here, these are for picking up the clips that have two little flats on them, plastic clips on bumper covers and fender wells. You can get down in there and pull them out. I have another set that's made a 90 going this way that go underneath the clip. This is for plastic rivets, plastic rivet tool. You use in the fender liners on cars. A lot of Dodges have those. The rest of it's pretty self-explanatory. I've got some side cutters, offset. I love these offset needle nose. I've got a set of big crimpers if I need them. A set of side cutters, three different size hose clamp hoses. These are to rock a hose loose, three different sizes. Those work really well. Next drawer is air tools. You know, I got my eraser wheel. I've got a small die grinder. I've got this die grinder too. I've got these 290s. And those, I didn't even, haven't even used anything with that one yet. This one I use with a fiber wheel for cleaning. I've got the panel cutter. I've got the air drill for using for cutting spot walls. I've got this cutoff wheel. That's a one horsepower snap-on. That thing rocks. This is a, not so much. This is probably quarter horse without a guard. I just use that in spots where I got to get tight. Two in packs. I love the Ingersoll Rand. I had really good luck with them. I got the 3 8 stubby and a half inch. That gets up into bumpers without a lot of hassle. This is just a, my hammer drawer. A lot of waste here in depth. I wish I had, and I might make one, a tray to go across here that can handle this small stuff and then I can put some more assortment of different stuff in the bottom here. I don't know if it'll be hammers or what. I only run with uh, one body, one body, well, typically one body hammer. I have two of these, they're identical. This is a snap-on hammer, they're hickory handles, amazing hammers. This is the only hammer I use, to be honest with you. I, at one time, had 35 hammers and I got rid of them all because I don't think you need them. This is a shot bag for door skins. It's filled with shot, so it'll put it in the contours and hammer against it, and that damage the skin. I've got three spoons, three different thicknesses for different applications where you need more strength. This is a plastic, kind of a chisel, very expensive, but I'll tell you what, this guy gets it done and doesn't damage the metal a lot of times. Four pounder, a couple of ball peams, actually three of them. This is a PDR. It's got caps on it for soft tapping for taking dents out. Got what they, they call this a caulk iron. This, this is, you know, you drive that with a four pound hammer and you can move some steel. This used to be my shrinking hammer. You can't find these anymore, made by a company called Streamline. This I use for a lot of different things. Just a chunk of plastic. It's some type of, it's not rigid plastic. I don't even know where I got it from, but I use this in hinges to get the hinge to move. I put it in doors to get the doors to move. Amazing tool for not being anything other than a chunk of plastic. 
I use two dollies, snap-ons. I like this dolly, this is my favorite. When it comes to hammering, straightening metal, I use this almost all the time. This one, not so much, but every once in a while, you gotta get in where there's a curve or you need something with a little bit more push to get behind it. I've got this snap-on rubber mallet, and this is a rubber mallet with a brass end. And I use the brass when I don't wanna damage something. Manual spot wall cutters you put behind, uh, in between the layers of metal and you hit on the back side here, and that'll go in and um, separate the welds. I won't cut them, but if they're already drilled out, you use that tool to get behind it and um, walk them out. So that's the bottom, that's the end of the toolbox. I thought it wouldn't hurt to go over some of this because like I said, I fought this industry for years. I made money, but I stop and think, man, how much more would I have made if I'd have just been this organized? And this is the rest of my kibosh. These are cabinets from Sam's Club and they're pretty beat up. They've been moved a lot. But I'll tell you what, they hold everything that I don't need on a daily basis and that whole setup that right there and that cabinet down there was a thousand dollars let me take you over here for a minute he's got a ton of stuff hanging on the outside he's got this end all loaded up during the day he drops his drill motors in here he's got all the magnetic holders the can holders a lot of this i actually sold them that i had that fit this toolbox He's got magnetic trays on the back. But now, after, I don't know, maybe five years of owning this monster, that's pretty close to $30,000. It's three quarters away empty. He doesn't even need it anymore. And we were talking about it the other day, and he said, well, I'm going to downsize. I said, why don't you just get a bench and a couple cabinets like I got, $1,000, cash in on this or sell it and go with that. So he's um, definitely thinking about it. He's going to probably buy a smaller box yet. He got tired of walking back and forth to his big box to get stuff. And during the day, a lot of us used to do is we'd empty out of the big box into a cart and roll the cart over to the car. But ultimately what ends up happening is, oh shit, I need this or Oh, I forgot to get that wrench or I need this. So in closing, after we've gone over this cart, I would just like to say that I think if you put more effort into your organization and not necessarily about how big your toolbox is, you'll find as time goes on, you can survive in a smaller cabinet. You also can survive with less tools. Today's cars do not require the tooling that we used to have to have or the tools we used to have to have to get the job done. So. I've refined it. I'm probably not the only one that's refined it. This is just a bit of piece of information from somebody that's been in an awful long time and has struggled. And I'm done with the struggle. I, I don't struggle anymore. The fact that I'm able to be efficient has taken away a lot of the fear of building a paycheck every week. It's really kind of changed my outlook. I used to look at it, look at a car and go, oh man, not another one of these. Like I take this thing apart. Oh, this, the last one was a pain in the neck. I don't look at it that way anymore. I look at it as I'm organized, I'm dialed in, I got the tools, I'm gonna get this job done. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for another video on this. I'm gonna go over my, some other areas that I think are real critical in the business and we'll keep pumping out this content. Hopefully it helps you to be more efficient, make more money and be happier. Thanks for watching.